Hello and welcome to today's lesson on atomic structure which is part of the atomic structure topic in GCSE separate science physics. So in today's lesson we're going to look at an understanding of the subatomic structure of the atom. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we should be able to understand the different parts of the atom, state the properties of subatomic particles and detail the composition of the atom from the periodic table. So we're looking at the following part of the specification in AQA separate science physics. Four 4.1.2 mass number atomic number and isotopes now physicists originally thought that the atom was the smallest possible component of the universe physicists thought that atoms were solid spheres which everything was made from which we call the atomic model but then physicists realized that atoms had an internal structure we originally thought that they were made from solid and positive matter with sprinkles of negative charges and this is called the plum pudding model and we look at this plum pudding model in the next couple of lessons now, over the course of scientific history, there have been many different models of the atom. Now, a scientific model is an idea used to explain observations and data. Now, if data cannot be explained by a model, we have to find a new model. So the uh, experiments carried out in the 19th century implied that the at atom could not be the atomic model. So physicists came up with the plum pudding model. So this was this happened as we observed electrons. So it meant that this ball model could not be true. Now, atoms do not exist like the particles described early in the course in the particle model of matter. So this meant we had to come up with a new model to explain the existence of the electron. Now it's important to note that science is constantly changing its models to explain new evidence and data. Now we'll look at the development of the model of the atom in upcoming lessons. Now previously we think of atoms like the following, the solids, the liquids, the gases in the particle model of matter. Now when we actually looked at substances under electron microscopes it actually looked quite similar to this. This is an actual picture of nickel atoms which we can then rearrange into nice patterns and shapes but our perception of the atom changed by modern understanding when a scientist called Niels Bohr examined the atom. Now when we examined the atom with stronger more powerful microscopes we saw that atoms were not solid indivisible balls but rather they have a structure which is called the subatomic structure. But what is actually found in the atomic substructure? Now it was originally postulated that all atoms were indivisible balls, the atomic model. But by the end of the 19th century we realized this model was not correct. It was then realized that atoms were not indivisible spheres and had a structure inside of them and we call this structure the subatomic structure. Now this model was later experimentally confirmed by Ernest Rutherford in Manchester in 1911 and this experiment he did to verify this model was called Rutherford's scattering experiment. Now it was determined that an atom had three smaller particles inside of it. The proton which is a positively charged particle and found in the nucleus which are with a relative mass of one. We know the neutron which is a neutron neutral particle and it's found in the nucleus and it has a relative mass of one and the electron a negatively charged particle found in energy levels around the nucleus but has a relative mass of zero. It's important to note that the electron is fundamental, which means it can't be broken down any further. So we've got the proton, which is a positively charged particle found in the nucleus, the neutron, a neutral particle found in the nucleus, and the electron, a negatively charged particle found in energy levels around the nucleus. Now, protons and neutrons are made from something smaller, called quarks, which is covered in A-level physics. Now, the proton and neutron are of similar size, so the electron is much smaller than the proton proton and the neutron. Now the proton and neutron are of similar size and this therefore means the electron is much smaller than the proton and neutron so this means we can conclude that all of the atomic mass is in the nucleus so we, we assume the electron has no effective mass. So we can summarize the properties of subatomic particles as the following. The proton a charge of plus one and a mass of one. The neutron a charge of zero and a mass of one and the electron a charge of minus one and a mass of zero. Now the number of protons in an atom determines it's the element it is. Each different element has a different number of protons. If you change the number of protons, you change the type of element. The number of neutrons in an atom determines the isotope. Each different isotope of an element has, the, has a different number of neutrons. So if you change the number of neutrons without changing protons, you change the type of isotope. And the number of electrons in an atom determines the ion. So each different ion of the same element has a different number of electrons. If you change the number of 
electrons without changing the number of protons you change the type of ion so it's important to note change in proton number changes type of element changing neutron number changes type of isotope changing electron number changes the type of ion now when the proton number is altered this takes precedence over all other changes the proton takes priority this means if you ever change the proton number it becomes a new element a new isotope or ion can only occur if there's no change in proton number so the protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus so we can think the nucleus is very massive but also very dense the electrons are found in energy levels around the nucleus electrons don't orbit the nucleus rather they exist in levels now different names for energy levels which are used across science include the word states orbitals or shells now the name for the shell nearest the nucleus is called the ground state the name for the shell furthest away from the nucleus is called the valence state now most of the atom is in fact empty space in between the nucleus and the energy levels the radius of the nucleus is about 10,000 times smaller than the radius of the atom so the picture of the of the atom on the screen now is currently not to scale so let's just summarize what we know about the atom We've got the proton and neutron in the center of the atom in the nucleus. We've got the electrons around the nucleus in energy levels. The proton has a charge of plus one, but a mass of one. A neutron has a charge of zero and a mass of one. And an electron has a charge of minus one and a mass of zero. If you change the number of protons, the atom is a new element. If you change the number of electrons without changing the number of protons, we get a new ion of the element. If you change the number of neutrons without changing the number of protons, you get a new isotope of the element. Now, the periodic table is very useful in physics as it can tell a, phys a physicist very quickly how many each of the subatomic particles is in an atom, and it all comes from the numbers surrounding the elements in the periodic table. So, when we look at an element in the periodic table, such as lithium, this information is displayed as the following. Now, the larger number, the number generally at the top, is the atomic, ma the atomic number or the mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons in the atom. Now, the smaller number, which tends to be in the bottom, is the atomic number. Number, the proton number the number of protons in the atom so as every atom is neutrally charged the number of electrons has to equal the number of protons now this is important because all atoms have to be electrically neutral so the charge of the positive protons and the negative electrons cancel each other out so as every atom is neutrally charged this means our number of electrons equals the number of protons so the number at the bottom is going to be the number of protons and the number of electrons for an atom so in this atom in lithium we have three protons we have three electrons but four neutrons because seven minus three equals four so we can use this information in all the different elements so for example we've got nitrogen here and we know that in nitrogen there are 15 protons and neutrons as the larger number is 15 we know that there are seven protons in the atom because the smaller number is seven but it also indicates to us that there are seven electrons in this atom because the number of electrons equals the number of protons so this means that the number of neutrons is 15 the big number minus the small number seven so therefore it equals eight now the proton number is unique to every element in the universe if this number changes then the atom becomes a different element now the process of an atom becoming a different element is called transmutation now this is why we actually believe we've discovered all the lighter elements in the universe as the bottom number in the periodic table increases by one each element so this means that in standard atoms the number of electrons in an atom increases by one per element so to clarify each end energy level in the atom except the first one can only contain eight electrons the first one the ground state can actually only contain two electrons so this means that in standard atoms the number of electrons in an atom increases by one per element so these facts combined form the theory of periodicity which explains all of chemistry now also it's important to know that the three isotopes of hydrogen have their own names that's because they were discovered first before we realized that isotopes existed so we actually thought they were new elements so we've got hydrogen deuterium and tritium now they're all isotopes of hydrogen as they all contain one proton which makes it a hydrogen uh, atom but they all have different numbers of neutrons the hydrogen isotope has zero neutrons deuterium has one neutron and tritium has two neutrons now it's important to be able to understand and identify different isotopes elements and ions from their subatomic configuration so let's summarize what we've learned in today's lesson the basic structure of an atom is a positively charged nucleus comprised of both protons and neutrons surrounded by negatively charged electrons the radius of a nucleus is less than one 
one ten thousandth that of a radius of the atom. Most of the mass of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus. Now, in an atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. Atoms have no overall electrical charge. All atoms of a particular element have the same number of protons. The number of protons in an atom of an element is called its atomic number. The total number of protons and neutrons in an atom is called its mass number. And we can represent the mass number and atomic number on as, as shown on screen. Now, atoms of the same element can have different numbers of neutrons. These are called these are called isotopes of that element. Atoms can turn into a positive ion if they lose one or more of the outer electrons. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we can understand the different parts of the atom. We can state the, diff the properties of subatomic particles and we can detail the composition of the atom from the periodic table. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the atomic structure of the, of the atom which is found in GCSE's separate science physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and have a lovely day.